Good morning children. Welcome to our next class. In today's class we are going to learn about measurements. How to measure length, mass, time and capacity. These are the things we are going to learn in today's class. Measurement of length. Length means anything to measure from one end point to the another end point is known as measurement of length. For example, your height, you are very short when you are in LKG. Right now your height is grown up. So your height is measured by using some standard measuring units. So some standard measuring tools are there to measure the length of any object. So the length means from one end point to the other end point how much space is there in between known as the length. So now we will see what are the measuring tools we use to measure the length. We are using some non-standard measuring tools and also we are using some standard measuring tools. What's the difference between non-standard and standard measuring tools we will see now. Non-standard means they will differ from person to person. For example, hand span. This is called as this picture shows you the hand span. Means the distance between your little finger to thumb is known as one hand span. So the object which you want to know the length by your hand span you can measure. For example, the chair where you are sitting from top to the chair to the uh, any leg of the chair down from there to down of the uh, chair leg you can measure by your hand span but it don't be same for you and your friend or for you and for your mom it changes the measurement which we are getting by hand span differs from person to person at the same time, the another measuring tool we are using that is cubit. So, cubit is right from your middle finger to your elbow. The space between middle finger to elbow, this we use for measuring any object's length. Even this also won't be same for all the people. It may differ for you, for your age children and to the adults. Like that, the differences will come when we use non-standard measuring tools. Then how we must measure the length? We are having some standard measuring tools. Wherever we use, whoever, whomever we, they use these tools, it gives a perfect length. So they are known as measuring tape. A tailor needs a measuring tape. Uh, to measure the cloth before stitching. A mason needs a measuring tape to measure the wall perfectly before building or constructing a building. And this is called a steel tape. A steel tape also have perfect numbers and gives a perfect length of the object. And we can also use the ruler. Your scales which you will use in your compass box, even those rulers also we are using to know the perfect length of any object. So this measuring tape and steel tape and the ruler, these all are known as standard measuring tools for measuring length. And at the same time, we are also using some units to denote the measurement, to write the measurement, we are using some units. Those units are called to measure the smaller units, very small lengths to measure like your eraser and pencil. They are very small in size. So such objects to measure, we are using some measuring units called as centimeters, cm, like that. For example, if you need to measure a pencil, 
take your scale and keep the starting point at uh, 1 and you see the other end of your pencil what's the number it's showing for example if it is showing you 5 then you have to write my pencil length is 5 centimeters because it's a small length so you have to write after the length of the object you need to mention the unit as cm small c small m that means centimeter okay and then larger lengths like that from the uh, a room length of a room or the length of your classroom or the length of any uh, kitchen room or the length of your bedroom to measure that you need to measure in meters and you have to denote it as small m after finding the length of the room you have to write the units as m for example 10 meters if it is 10 meters after writing the number 10 you need to mention it as small m so that is the unit measuring unit for larger lengths very small lengths centimeters larger lengths meters if it is still larger that means the distance from your village to your grandmother's village then the distance is very long. Then you have to measure that length in kilometers. And you need to denote it as k and m. Small k and small m. For example, the distance between your village and your grandma village. For example, 150 kilometers. You should not say that distance as 150 centimeters. Because it's so long distance. So, long distances are measured in the units of kilometers and short distances are measured in centimeters and uh, little longer, not too small, not too long. Then such type of lengths can be measured in meters. Understood children? Now, we will see what are the questions given in uh, page number 30 S1. In measurements lesson 30 page number what questions are given you see. Measure the height of your chair just now I told you from the place where you keep your head from there to down of uh, any leg. You measure with your scale and also with your hand span. Will it show the same measurement? Not at all, definitely it changes. And see the second picture. What is the measuring tool is shown in this picture? Identify. That is the ruler. Ruler he is using to measure one object in the picture. Is it a standard measuring tool or non-standard? Why do you think so? Ruler is definitely a standard measuring tool because it has numbers on it so that it gives always correct measurement and third question which standard unit of measurement will you use to measure and why two dis distance between two cities which standard unit of measurement you will use will you say in the centimeters the distance between two cities not at all you cannot we must use kilometers the measuring unit for the distance between two cities should be written as kilometers and length of your kitchen slab should be in the meters because that is not too small length and at the same time it's not too lengthy so we must use in such case the measuring unit is meter understood children now we will move on to the mass. How to identify the mass of any object? For example, to know your body weight. The weight itself called as mass. So to know our body weight, what we are using? We are using weighing machine. Every year in the school, your physical instructor, your PT teacher measure your height and weight, right? 
uh, he will ask you to stand on this weighing machine so that how much weight your body has he will tell you by seeing these numbers which are written on this weighing machine so is it a standard tool or not definitely it's a standard tool because it has numbers and give correct mass of any object so this is for knowing the weight of human beings for us then how to identify the weight of any other object like fruits vegetable groceries and all to identify we have different types of measuring tools so weighing machine is one of the measuring tool at the same time the another measuring tool is digital balance in digital balance it shows directly only the measurement the number will come it shows the numbers directly so this is called digital balance electronic balance or digital balance we will say and two more units two more measuring tools we are using to measure the mass those are this is kitchen balance so kitchen balance any groceries or any fruits and vegetables when you are buying if you keep those fruits and vegetables in this plate and automatically it shows the weight of that item whatever you are keeping in this plate so this balance is known as kitchen balance and this one is called beam balance beam balance in all the uh, shops you can observe this and uh, uh, to find out the measurement of groceries pulses cereals and all we are measuring with the help of a beam balance so there are different tools we are using to measure the mass of objects one is like weighing machine and the next one is electronic machine electronic balance and the next one is kitchen balance and this is beam balance these are the standard tools to measure the mass in the same way there are standard measuring units to measure the mass to denote the mass we are having some units suppose to say your weight how will you say my weight is 10 meters is the meters says the weight no meters will tell us about the length at the same way kilograms kilograms your weight you will say i am 15 kilograms i am 25 kg so k g k small letter even g small letter that is the measuring unit for mass so measuring unit for mass is kg kilograms you have to write it as k and small g that is for a bigger weights heavy weights to measure the heavy weights we are using kilograms kgs we'll denote it as kg but smaller weights for example half kg of pulses means for smaller weights more than this uh, for example uh, standard unit for measuring very small weights what we can take here Uh, like some biscuits you are measuring biscuits weight will be very less no so to measure this smaller units we are using grams to measure the small units of mass we are using grams to measure a heavy weight we are using kilograms in grams we will write as small g and small m kilograms we will write as k and g kg so smaller heavy weights we are using a measuring unit as kg for smaller weights we are using measuring unit as grams understood children now we will see what are the questions given in s2 all of you come to Uh, page number you see in your volume book page 
you have to identify what is the measuring tool a box is given from that you identify the measuring tools and the next one a picture is given which measuring tool that is you have to write the name of that okay and you also identify this picture is given in the in your workbook so this is what type of weighing tool you know what type of measuring tool is it you know very well so write the name of this and you also say that whether it is a standard measuring tool or non standard measuring tool also you have to find out and in the same way some things are given how you will measure them and what is the standard unit for their mass you have to write it first picture is pencil so pencil standard unit is kilograms ah the pencil is 5 kilograms will you write have you ever heard saying the pencil weight is in kilograms it's so funny right so we'll say the weight of or the mass of pencil only in the grams because it is in smaller weight its weight is very less so the objects which have very less weight we will denote them as grams we'll use the measuring unit as grams for example as he shown in the picture when you are measuring mangoes mangoes have more weight or less weight comparatively with the pencil mangoes are having more weight so their mass is denoted or their mass measuring unit for their mass is definitely kilograms 2 kg of mangoes 3 kg of mangoes uh, like that we say we never say 1 gram of mango 5 gram of mango because that is a smaller unit so the heavier objects we are using measuring unit as kilograms understood children very good now we will move on to the capacity how to measure the capacity what's the meaning of capacity capacity is the measurement how much space is there in a container to hold a liquid so to measure the liquids like water milk and all we cannot hold them in our hand for measuring they will flow very easily so to measure such type of liquids we are using the capacity containers we are using how much space is there in this container so that if we know how much amount of liquid we are taking we can understand very easily so that's only known as measuring capacity so what are the measuring tools we are using to measure the capacity yes those are measuring cups this is a measuring cup where the numbers are written on this cup you can you will see the structure of this cup as like normal mug when you keep water with your mugs you can only count the number of mugs but you cannot say how many liters of water you are using okay so to say exact amount of liquid how much you are using you have to use the measuring cup so on measuring cup the numbers are written in milliliters and in the liters ml as written on this cup you can see clearly 250 ml 750 ml 1 1 liter liter is the larger amount to measure large amount of liquids we are using measuring unit as liters for a small amount to measure for example your medicine your medicine you never will use in liters 1 liter of medicine never we use so any medicine we are taking in very small quantities so small quantities of liquids 
for measurement we are using measuring unit as milliliters milliliters we will write as small m and small l so this is the measurement for small this is the measurement for smaller units of liquids measuring unit for small amount of liquids is ml so you can see on this medicine dropper 50 ml has written and in the same way this is the measuring cup we use for measuring the liquids in large amount of liquids measuring unit is liter small amount of measuring liquid measuring unit is milliliters understood children now we will see what questions are given about capacity in your worksheet now come to page 32 page 32 you find out three people are using different measuring tools among them which measuring tool is correct measuring tool the first person is using only a cup and the second child the baby is drinking the milk with a measuring bottle the numbers are written on this milk bottle and the third picture is the empty the glass which contain the water so among these three which is the standard tool for measuring the capacity definitely the milk bottle because the numbers are written on this bottle and the next one uh, they are using a spoon to measure the medicine so is it a correct standard tool to measure the medicine definitely not because the spoon capacity may change from one spoon to the another spoon so it's not the correct measuring of the medicine so what we can use instead of this instead of a spoon we can use a measuring cap and your medicine bottle caps milliliters 5 ml 1 ml 2 ml 3 ml like that measurement will be given on your syrup bottle caps when you are using syrup next time you find out the units on your measuring cap so that is the standard tool to measure a medicine liquid medicine and the last one jane has to measure has to measure the capacity of a plastic tub how he can measure you guess it how he can measure the measurement of a plastic cup uh, okay and also salim wants to measure the actual amount of milk in his favorite cup in a cup how much ml of milk will come he wanted to know how he can measure it okay you find out these two answers and complete in page 32 children and the last measurement is the most and important measurement is time how to measure the time time is very important for us you need to get up early in the morning you have to get ready to school so everything is going on by the time if you are late then you will be late to school so time is giving you idea when to get up when to move to school these all then how we are measuring the time how we are measuring the length you learnt how we are measuring the mass you learnt how we are measuring the capacity also you learnt and now we'll see how we have to measure the time how can we measure the time to get get up to get ready for school or office to catch the bus to go in a train to go in an aeroplane for all this we need exact time or else we miss that particular event right so how to measure this time we'll see what are the measuring tools we are using to measure the time and how to identify how to measure the time we are going to understand now 
So there are two types of clocks we are using to measure the time. One is analog clock and the other one is digital clock. What the pictures I am showing, these two pictures among these two, one is the analog clock, other one is the digital clock. And now we will see what is the difference between analog clock and the digital clock. An analog clock is a clock with a dial. Dial is there inside this uh, gold color one known as dial. So this dial or clock face, it has two hands inside. Both are in black color in this analog clock. So here the small hand shows the hours. How many hours right now? How many hours with what number we are running? What's the time now? To say the hours, we are using shorthand. Shorthand shows about hours. And the long hand tells us about minutes. Okay. So now you see this analog clock and find, let me know the time. What's the time in this analog clock? Exactly 5 minutes to 12. Or you can even say 11, 11 hours, 55 minutes. Okay. So this is called as analog clock. And this is a digital clock. Digital clock has no hands, no hands in this or no dial in this. It displays the time in numbers. See, 14 hours. 5 minutes. The digital clock in this picture showing 14 hours, 5 minutes. The dots, these dots which are there in the middle between these two numbers will separate the hours and minutes. So the last two digits will tell us about minutes. The first two digits will tell us about hours. Okay. So, this is the way to measure the time children. Now, we will see our last worksheet. This is page number 33. You see one picture is given here and they are asking you to identify the uh, tool is shown in the picture. Why we have stopped using this? This picture shows actually about sundial. Depending on the sun, the hands will move. So, based on the sun, we used to find the time long back. Egyptians first time found this sundial. But later, we stopped using this because right now we are making uh, analog clocks, digital clocks. So many different varieties are available. So, people stopped using sundial. And the next one, he is asking you to draw a